I'm Carol Reynolds, absolutely delighted again to have a chance to talk with Maestro Jerry Junkin, my favorite conductor and the, the voice and the drive and the heart of the Dallas Winds. Hello. Hello, Carol. It's always great to speak with you too. I'm I'm honored. Always my pleasure. And I I'm I can't tell you how much we appreciate all that you do for the Dallas Winds. You're oh, great. It's just it just makes my life so exciting to be associated because associated with you all because what you all do is just wild let's face it your concerts are not just let's go to a concert everyone is an event and this one absolutely an event yes Jerry, just off the bat i know you had a busy day you're in the middle of a crazy day with a thousand things if you're in the elevator we're starting on the bottom floor and i'm somebody you've never seen before and you have to get to floor 32. <laughs> right what would you tell me about this concert why i should drop everything and come well, first of all, you should drop everything and come, right? Because it's it's going to be a terrific concert. So this this particular concert was put together with the idea of marrying sound and film, and really the the genesis of it uh, came about because we're doing this terrific piece of Michael Udall's. That is, I'm not, I don't want to say too much about it, actually, believe it or not, but it's it's a piece that has a score to a film which he has made and produced the film has been seen but the score that goes along with it has not been heard in this form yet so this is going to actually be a world premiere um so this uh, it's a terrific piece but that gave me the idea look we're going to just from a practical standpoint uh we're going to have the the screen in there we're going to have the projector we've got to project the images for his piece so Let's include other things. So every piece has a component of film associated with it. Um, some of the pieces are movies. So we're not showing the movie. We're not trying to coordinate the music with the movie in a specific way. But there are going to be images from the films which are going to be projected, which are going to give, they're going to like trigger the memory for people who have seen uh, the James Bond movies, for instance, because they're, that's one of the pieces. And we'll talk more about uh, specifically each one, but I think it's going to be a great concert. It's going to be great fun. If you like music, if you like live music and you like movies, this is your concert. There you go, right there. And who doesn't like live music and who doesn't like movies? I mean, that's that's the best in a gorgeous right. space. Um, so this when you're conducting, and there's a visual component, maybe even a screen going on. Does that change what you do at all? Um, on this concert, it will a little bit. Uh, and uh, not on every piece, but there are a couple of the pieces we're doing, certainly on Michael Udall's piece. Um, it's important that the music be coordinated with the film. It's designed that way. So I'll actually have an earpiece in my ear with a click track so that I can make sure that there are moments where the music should really hit with a scene change. Now, uh, there are other pieces that even though they're not designed necessarily in that same way, if I can time it correctly, sort of instinctively by watching the film as it's up, there, then it'll just add to it. You know, there are a couple of big hits uh, in a couple of the pieces that if we can align it with the film, uh, it works. So I do have to maybe consciously think about the pacing of where we are with the film that film clips that have been presented to us. So that's a little bit different. <laughs> Do the players feel any differently? Do you think, I mean, are they just so focused on playing? Are they, are they conscious of that, that big screen behind them? Is that fun even for them? I, yeah, I think that it is, but I, you know, they, they can't really watch it, unfortunately, <laughs> because they're, they're busy, you know? So, um, and if, if I do my job well, if I do it correctly, they shouldn't feel any different. I should I just, just conduct the music, you know, even if I have something in my ear or if I'm trying to coordinate something, it shouldn't to them feel any different or look any different. Um, so they're just playing the same way that they always do, which is really well. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so you have music from, I mean, one of the big elements of this is James Bond, right? Okay, how did that come about? Are you just a lover of Bond? It's just fabulous music? All of the above, right? Or come on, Yes, it's me. kind of all of the above, but these are several of the pieces became available to us this year because there's this an old friend he's not old but he's an old old friend of the dallas winds yako nefs 
who lives in the Netherlands, very talented, very gifted arranger, musician, uh, band conductor in the Netherlands. But he has, we played several of his arrangements in the past, and he sent me these. Uh, so one of them is called In the Service of Her Majesty, which I guess is now an erroneous title. It would be In the Service of His Majesty. Uh, but it's a synthesis of a number of James Bond film scores. And so, which, you know, all of those. So there's there are excerpts from Dr. No, Goldfinger, uh, you know, uh, Her Majesty's Secret Service, all, all several of these films. Uh, and so we have excerpt, we've had someone excerpt portions of those. Again, it's not necessarily coordinated, you know, specifically as a movie soundtrack, but it's just to give the audience these visual images of and a reminder uh, of what's going on in these films. But it's a terrific film score. Um, it's a great arrangement of all those. And he had also done in a previous year, the intermezzo uh, an adagio from Spartacus, the ballet of Cacciatoria, which is not a film at all. Although we do have uh, a number of there, you know, there are a lot of recorded um, excerpts from the actual ballet of Spartacus. So we're going to be playing one of those, which is really from that moment in the music, which is that's one of the great uh, ballet scores anyway, uh, Spartacus. So we'll be doing that. That that has a film component, but it's not necessarily one that people will have seen in the movie theater. Uh, but then in the, the concert ends with the great Max Steiner uh, score to Casablanca, uh, one of the great movies ever, you know, ever made. Uh, and again, that's it's if you've ever seen Casablanca, then that music just immediately you almost don't have to see the film, but the film imagery helps, you know, so uh, because it can all come back to you, even if you if you're, if you're not looking at it at that particular moment. Yeah, that that is a tearjerker and it's it's popular. Oh. It's played a lot. Right. I mean, that's yes. it, I was surprised in listening over uh, to it again, you know, in anticipation of us being together, just right. how strongly the patriotic music is in that suite. Yes, the French national anthem, you know, plays a really strong role in that piece. And I mean, it's 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 that's that's a kind of a, you know, post World War Two nationalism uh, sort of thing that was going on with that. But it's it's great. And then, you know, it's set in Morocco, some of it, you know, and it the film moves around. But it's uh, Steiner was able to capture he, he puts you like a good all good movie scores do. He puts you in a place you know, when you hear the music. Uh, so you imagine you're there uh, with the visual part of it. I think it's going to make it really great for the audience. So I think it's fair to say if you miss this concert, you're missing this amazing world premiere that you don't want to say too much about because the material is, is and I agree, it, it is extraordinary, visually dazzling, uh, emotionally moving, uh, unusual, yes. gorgeous. I mean, I, you're the one conducting it, but the little bit I know about it, I'm just bowled over. Yeah. Oh, I think it's terrific. Uh, and, so, and I'm so excited that the composer, Michael Udall, who's a longtime friend, is going to be in attendance. And he, I, he's going to speak about the piece before. So like I said, I didn't want to steal his thunder here. Uh, exactly. because I want you to come to the concert and I want you to hear the composer talk about uh, what he was doing. So it's, yeah. it, you know, of course, I could be expected to say this anyway, but this is really a concert you don't want to miss. Exactly. And as always, there's so much on it that no one wants to miss. So thank you very much. Just for I will mention this. too, there's a oh, okay. surprise at the very end. There is an encore that I think oh. the audience will like, but I'm not going to say any more about it. <laughs> uh, now, you know, that's just not, that's a classic thing to do though. I'm not going to say any more, but you don't want to miss that either. And I don't know anything about that either. So, you that's know, right. so I guess we better be at the concert. <laughs> that's exactly right. I hope to see everyone out there. Okay. <laughs> Well, Jerry, thank you again, and, and see you soon at the of concert. Of course. As always, it's a pleasure, Carol. Thank you so much. Thank you.